Hey everyone, um, I did a live a few days ago on embodiments and I certainly didn't save it. Um, so I want to do another live on embodiment because I think this is such an important topic. It's something everyone talks about so much in the manifestation world, right? Like embody your desire and be the version of you that has what you want. But I think we really overlook, like, what does that actually mean? What does it mean to embody my desire? Like to connect to my desire. How do I actually do that? This is something that not a lot of people are talking about. And what's more is that the work that I do with my clients involves a lot of body work. We, we need to put the body back into embodiment because everyone is trying to intellectualize their way into embodying their desire. This is not an intellectual process. Embodiment has the word embody in it. It's, it's, it's a body process. Your body needs to feel it. You need to feel it in your body. Um, and so when we talk about embodiment, what actually is embodiment? Embodiment is when you intentionally choose the frequency of your desire and you stay in that frequency. So what you're doing when you embody your desire is you're choosing a frequency to align with your desire. You're choosing the frequency that aligns with your desire. That is embodiment. Okay. And how does frequency, what's, what does it mean when we say frequency? Like what am I doing when I choose a frequency? Your frequency is determined by the chemistry of your body. So your the chemistry of your body, your mindset, your brain, your body has to all be in a certain place to create a certain frequency that aligns with your desire right? And this happens, yes, when your dominant thoughts and your dominant emotions are aligned with your desire, then you're in that frequency. Why is this so hard? Because we spend so much time trying to intellectualize embodiment and try and talk about mindset and talk about affirmations and say these things and think this way and, you know, think positive and, you know, all of these things help a hundred percent, but ultimately embodiment comes down to the body and your body is addicted to what is familiar. Your body has chemical addictions to every thought you have, every feeling you have produces a chemical reaction in the body. And it's very possible for your body to become addicted to these chemical reactions. So in essence, your body is addicted to your current circumstance because your current, because all of us are reacting to circumstance, right? Something happens around you, it makes you feel angry, it makes you feel happy, it makes you feel sad. And every time you have that emotional reaction, you're triggering a chemical reaction in the body. And your body becomes addicted to that chemical reaction. And when it wants to recreate it, it recreates the same circumstance over and over and over. This is why it's so hard for people to break free from circumstance. This is why we create the similar scenario, we've all seen it before. It's like the same story, different people, and we keep creating the similar reality. In order to break free from your current circumstance, you have to stop reacting to it, right? Because how does your body fuel the addiction? How does it get its fix? You have an external circumstance and you have a reaction. Now, when your body has withdrawal, it then looks for a circumstance to create the reaction. Now, when you break that chain and you stop reacting to your reality, when you stop having just a knee jerk reaction to whatever's going on around you, what you're doing is you're signaling to your body that even though I'm having this circumstance, you're not going to get that chemical reaction. I am not going to allow myself any longer to be addicted or allow this circumstance to fuel my addiction to this chemical reaction. So embodiment actually, because it's in the body, it's very hard to break. It's very hard to break free from embodying our current circumstance because your body is legitimately, is legitimately addicted to your current circumstance. Okay. And the reason is your body thrives on familiarity. We say that, but really it's addiction. It's addiction to chemistry. It's addiction to the thoughts, feelings, and emotions that your circumstance produces. So it keeps you stuck. It keeps you in the same place. It's not until you have the capability to master your emotions and say that, no, I'm going to choose intentionally how I'm going to feel in my body. My circumstance does not dictate what goes on in my body. I do.
I do. I decide. And I am now going to intentionally choose a new frequency, a new chemistry. I'm going to start to get myself addicted. When it's a bad habit, we call it addiction. When it's something good, we say habit. So I'm going to get my body into the habit of experiencing things that I want right? Which could be abundance. It could be healthy relationships. It could be health. Whatever it is you want to create in your life, you need to get your body actually comfortable experiencing that. Because if your body's not comfortable, it's going to just keep having a knee-jerk reaction to circumstance and you're going to have no control over your thoughts and emotions. And then your body's just fueling its own addiction. So I, I want to make sure I'm covering everything. Um... So when, what is the body work, right? How do we know where my body is? How do I know the frequency of my body? How do I know my body is in the frequency of my desire, whatever that means, right, when we talk about embodiment? The primary way to know and the reason that I look at every time I work with a client, whether it's business coaching, whether it's manifestation coaching, or whether it's health, the first place I look to see if you're embodying your desire is your health. Because when you don't embody your desire, what we're saying is now you're addicted to toxic circumstance. You're, you have a toxic chemical addiction to your emotions, right? So you're accumulating toxins by with it's experiencing the same emotional chemistry over and over. And when you do this, that eventually hardens into a physical condition, right? So if you have any sort of chronic condition, if you have any sort of pain in the body, headaches, migraines, PMS, Anything in the body that's uncomfortable is showing you that you're out of alignment. It's showing you that you're not embodying what you truly desire or even who you truly are. When you're truly your authentic self, these pains in the body go away, right? So the first place to look when you're doing embodiment work is in the body, right? Not to intellectualize it because there's so many coaches out there that are going to mindset you into embodiment, but you want to look at the body first. Wherever you're holding toxic energy in the body, it manifests as pain, it manifests as chronic condition. Right there we know where, what thoughts and what behavior and what emotions you're carrying that are bringing you out of alignment, that are keeping you from being in the frequency of your desire, right? These have become toxic because they're preventing you from having what you want. So what we, what we look at then is, okay, let's say you have a chronic condition. Let's say your chronic condition is thyroid, right? So you're experiencing thyroid issues in the body. What is the underlying root cause of thyroid? Then the underlying root cause of thyroid, thyroid is all about throat chakra, which is all about your truth, right? So it's understanding your truth and expressing your truth, not about communicating all the time, but more about being available for your own truth seeing yourself, seeing your truth, being able to feel it and then express it, right? So if that's where you're holding your, your chronic condition, then we know, okay, the emotional root cause of this is holding back self-expression. It's not recognizing your own truth, not listening to your own truth. So let's start to do that. Let's start to listen to your own truth. Because what happens is when you change that behavior, you're going to suddenly, you're, you're, releasing whatever resistance you have to manifesting what you want and you're clearing the toxic energy from your body so your body will heal your thyroid will heal but also you'll start to create the reality that you want you'll start to create circumstances that you want because you're no longer addicted to the chemistry that is creating toxic energy which is creating your issues in your thyroid I know I'm going deep, guys, so if you're with me, <laughs> I'm happy. If this is landing, let me know because I know it's a, it's, a, it's a lot of heavy, intricate work that I've spent years studying. But basically what I'm saying is embodiment work happens in the body. Hey, from the UK, MJ, thank you for joining, and I hope this is resonating and landing because I know it's a lot of heavy stuff. Okay, thank you, Rochelle. Um, yeah, so basically we're holding, where you're holding toxic energy is showing you the emotional pattern that's stopping you from manifesting what you want. More so, it's showing you the negative emotional addiction that you have. Your body is addicted to the chemistry of that emotion of suppressing your truth, for example. That, that Every time you suppress your truth, you create a chemical reaction in the body and your body is actually now addicted to that feeling. 
That's why you're continuing to create the circumstance. That's why you're reacting to that circumstance, right? You're going to put yourself in situations where you feel like you can't speak up or you have to be in, you have to behave in a certain way or you have to get things just right. Perfectionism is a big sign of not um, listening to your own truth. So you're going to keep creating these situations and circumstances to fuel that chemical addiction in the body. And the more, oh, uh, overthinking. Okay. I'm going to get to overthinking. That's a good one. So the more that you continue to like feed that addiction, so to say, the more you're holding back what you want to manifest, right? So when we talk about embody what you want to desire, your body's already showing you where and how you're not embodying it. So once you start to tackle the emotional root cause, that's when you're going to start to shift the things that are blocking your manifestations. So overthinking is a good one. Um, MJ, like tell me in the comments, like what symptoms are you experiencing? Migraines, headaches, dizziness, any nervous system issues, but like we all get addicted to overthinking, right? And so what we do is we create scenarios and it's, it's funny because we think we're creating a scenario, but you're actually not even creating the scenario. What's happening is the scenarios are always there and you're now choosing to look at it, right? So we think, we think oftentimes that our thoughts are creating our feelings, but it can be the opposite as well. When your body has withdrawal, right? We talked about emotional chemical addiction. Now your body is having withdrawal and it's like, I'm having withdrawal to the chemistry of overthinking and it's just gonna take anything that's happening around you. You can take any small incident and you'll start to overthink it to start to create that chemistry in the body. So it's not even like you attra attracted a brand new scenario. You just kind of looked at what, what was there, what was always there, and now you're using it to fuel the addiction. Heart palpitations, head shaking, head shaking for sure, right? So these, that's basically heart palpitations is probably also showing you a little bit more around listening to your truth. Um, overthinking, overworking, I might put, put with it and a freeze response. That's interesting. Um, overthinking, heart palpitations, head shaking, freeze response. Is there a fear, MJ, of there of like getting it wrong maybe, of like having the wrong reaction? Because heart and head and anything above is, um, is, is perfectionism usually. Lower back pain is usually safety. So like a feeling of uh, like you're not feeling safe. And what happens is the way that this works, right? Like let's go with the lower back pain for a second. If you're having lower back pain, um, and so you're addicted to this feeling of not feeling safe. What happens is when you don't feel safe, you start, you're all, you're on alert. You're always in brace position. You're always looking out and you're always like, you know, on the lookout. And this gives you a sense, a false sense of comfort and security that if I'm always in brace position, then I'm going to be safe, right? So now you've created this lower back pain and your body creates this addiction to being on the lookout all the time because it thinks it's protecting you. It thinks it's keeping you safe from something else. So lower back pain is definitely um, a safety thing. I would totally look into where, where am I not um, trusting others? Where, why do I not feel safe with others or even myself? How do you stop the overthinking? Okay, this is what we're gonna get into next. Okay, so I'm just gonna check my notes because I wanna make sure I cover everything with you guys. Um, okay, so the work that we do, uh, you're welcome. Um, drop any more questions in the comments, guys. Um, so the work that I do with people is working with the mind and the body in tandem. So understanding these connections and knowing that, okay, yes, my mindset is stopping me from having the life that I want, but my body is showing me exactly how, right? Cause you're going to listen to all these people online and they're going to say, if you want a money mindset, you have to feel safe around money. You have to feel this, you have to feel that. But the reality is there's no one size fits all approach to anything, right? Even to business strategy, even to manifestation, there's no one size fits all approach. You want to actually build a connection with yourself, with your body and start to understand that like, okay, what am I holding and why am I holding it? right? So we talked a little bit about safety. Usually there's a point in your childhood or a point even from a past life where you realize that you're not safe, right? And you're holding on to this. I'm going to have to be in brace position and 
ensure my safety and survival all the time. There's no way I can feel safe in this world. And so you do that and you, you create this pain in your body and that pain is saying, hey, like, let your guard down. You don't need to protect yourself because this protection is stopping you from experiencing the reality that you want. So this is the talk between, I guess, the mind, the brain, and the body. And that's the kind of work we do. So what we do now, if we're having overthinking, for example, right? What we, we do, we work on this in two ways. We start to move the energy in the body. And this is like the physical approach to it all. So this is where like the herbs can come in, exercise, yoga, any kind of physical movement. Um, diet is another one. How did I miss that one? Diet. So we start to incorporate all of these things into your treatment, right? So how do we start to move the physical? Because now that this thing that started off as chemicals and emotions and thoughts has hardened into something physical. So we need to combat this in the physical as the, at the same time as we start to change your mindset and shift your behavior. So if you have patterns of overthinking, you can try all you want and like calm your mind and meditate and stop the overthinking. But if you're still holding on to some kind of trauma somewhere in your body, it's going to be very difficult. It's going to feel almost impossible to stop the overthinking. It's almost like you're not even in control because your body has taken over. It's so addicted to your overthinking that it's almost going to force you into overthinking no matter how hard your brain is trying to stop it. Because I bet you've tried to stop it. I bet you've tried meditation, go for a walk, divert your attention, journal, script, everything everybody tells you. You're trying it. But until you don't realize that where else in my body, where am I holding the trauma that's triggering the overthinking? And how can I start to move that energy? How can I start to heal that energy? And then in tandem, do all of the other things, do the meditation, do the journaling, try and use your brain to stop your overthinking. If you're not doing both at once, it's going to feel like a really uphill battle, right? Because embodiment, again, I'll say this again and again, I'm going to, the word embodiment uses the word body. You cannot embody anything unless you bring your body on board. It has to be on board. So overthinking isn't done by stopping the mind and stopping the brain. Overthinking is being, is stopping overthinking happens when we discover where in the body we're triggering the pattern of overthinking from. Okay. So it would, if, if, if anybody wants to do this work, if you want to do it with me, great. If you want to even start to do some self analysis, start to connect everything that's happening in your body. It's all connected. You're a whole system your mind, your body, your soul, your emotions, your thoughts, it all operates as one. We cannot separate any one part. It's not like, well, the shoulder pain is not related to the hip pain. It's everything is connected. So I would start to write down like, okay, what is everything I'm experiencing in my body? Um, one of the things I do with my clients, you can do if you know enough about chakras is which Everything that I know about my body, which chakra, where is that sitting? Where, which chakra is imbalanced that's triggering that? And that's where you're going to find that's what you're holding on to. That's where your, your emotional root cause is. So I want to make sure I've covered everything. If you guys have questions, again, just leave them in the comments. Um, for me, I think the biggest thing here is... The, also seeing how this plays out in your life, right? So when I'm working with my clients, most of my clients are entrepreneurs. So when I'm working with an entrepreneur, where, wherever their body is holding pain, if they come to me with any sort of chronic condition, I can tell you exactly what's holding them back in their business because it's the same emotional root cause. Even as an entrepreneur, you can't leave behind your health. You can't leave behind your overthinking. You can't just switch it off and go into your business. Everything comes with you, your whole being, right? So your health is very closely related to your business because of course, business is like manifesting anything else. Your health shows me your money mindset. Your health can show me how you are in relationships, how you are in love, how things are playing out for you with family, friends, with your kids. It all manifests in the body. So when we talk about manifestation, when we even talk about business success, do the mindset work shift your mind, but don't ignore your body. Because when you ignore your body, it's going to feel like a serious challenge. It's almost going to feel impossible. 
when you go into the body, when you start building this connection, when you start connecting the dots and all your symptoms, like every little thing, guys, write it down. Nothing is insignificant and start understanding what's triggering what. The other thing I do with my clients, especially entrepreneurs, is like what's going on in your body in a day to day basis, right? What's happening with your cycle? Where is your energy levels at? What's happening with your digestive system? If you're holding on to something that you need to let go of, it's going to show up in your digestion, guys. You're going to be constipated. Um, if you're having headaches, dizziness, it's a sign of something else that's going on. It's, sorry, what's going on in your business is actually a result of what you're feeling in your body. Your body is showing you what you need to, what you need to shift, what you need to change up, how you need to move in order to go to where you want to get to go. The body is, it's designed, it's, if you think about it this way, when you talk about being here in the 3D reality and manifesting your desires and experiencing what you want, it is your body that's actually experiencing it. So your body is totally on board. Whatever it is that you want to create in this reality, that you want to experience in this reality, your body is 100% on board. And right away, it's like, okay, cool. Let's manifest it. Let's choose it. Let's experience it. And when you stray away from that, it shows you through pain. And if you know how to listen to that pain, manifestation is a whole lot easier. It stops becoming just a head game and it starts becoming a body game. And that's when you truly embody what it is that you want to desire, whether that's money, business, health, wealth, love, whatever it is, your body is communicating to you. So I'm going to leave it at that. Um, I wanted to do this live because I know a lot of you um, were asking in my stories, but also there's a, just so much talk and so much throwing around of this word embodiment and embody your desires. And it's become this like buzzword or key thing, just be the person. Um, but it's understanding that being the person isn't just an um, intellectual thing. It's not, it's a physical thing. It happens in the body as much as it happens in the brain. And if you really want to understand manifestation, if you really want to get good at manifestation, focus on the body as much as you're focusing on like, as much as guys, 50% focus on the body, listen to the body, tune into the body, see what's going on there. Um, with all my entrepreneur clients, with all my business clients, we're, I know everything about their health. I'm constantly asking questions about their health. How are they feeling? Because it shows me what's going on in their brain. It's all connected. So I'm going to leave it there. Um, I hope that that resonated. I hope that's helped you guys understand manifestation a little bit better. If you're struggling with manifestation, if you're wondering why it's not working for you, why affirmations are not working for you, why you haven't gotten what you, you're setting out to manifest, um, this might be another piece of the puzzle. This might be like that missing link that you need to really understand what's going on for you. Thank you everybody for joining. It was lovely. I'm going to try and do a lot more lives um, as I'm getting more used to it. I think it's like my second or third time doing it, but it's so much fun. I'll try and do more.